welcome to the new course ergonomics research technique. I am Dr. Urmi R. Salve. I am associate professor at department of design IIT Guwahati. Today in this lecture I will be telling you that how this course will run, what are the contents we are going to cover in during this particular course and what will be the modalities of conducting this particular course. So, let us begin with the terminology that is going to be used frequently because that is the main agenda of this course that is the ergonomics. So, let us define it. In there are dif different definitions available in literature and various researchers over the period of time this particular uh, term they try to define. However, in 2000 International Ergonomics Association tried to compile various major aspects of ergonomics and tried to define it. So, we will be following that particular definition. IEA says that ergonomics or human factor is the scientific discipline. Okay. So, it is a scientific discipline concerned with the understanding of interaction among human and other elements of the system. So, here a whenever we are talking about ergonomics system is a major concern. So, whenever we are talking about human factors, we are talking not talking about the individual human factors, we are talking about human factors which is present in a particular system. So, ergonomics is a scientific discipline concerned with the understanding of interactions among the humans and the other elements of the system and also the professions that applies theoretical principle, data, method to design in order to optimize human well-being and overall system performance. So, whenever we are talking about ergonomics specifically the kind of applied research we normally practice in our day to day activity that is you know optimization between the human well being and the uh, overall system performance. So, whenever we are talking about ergonomics it is not about the human it also talks about the performance of the system. Okay. So, we will be talking about productivity, we will be talking about the efficacy of the system, efficiency of the system as well as the capacity, capability of the human being or operator who is operating the system. So, both the cases we need to understand that how we are giving maximal output from the system with a proper well being with a proper consideration of the well being of the human being. So, normally I practice also I suggest my students to practice that we, we take ergonomics as the work of science, okay, work science. So, whenever we are talking about work there is a science behind it and if you can uh, work on that particular if you can study that particular science you will be able to discover lot of ergonomics you know principle and the methods that is involved in that particular system. So, this is a science which is expected to contribute to design of user friendly product. So, here it is very important we are talking about a product product can be tangible product can be intangible whatever we are developing it should be user friendly and working condition which are adequate to the human being. So, this will be our main motto of doing any kind of ergonomic study or ergonomics intervention. So, in this particular course whatever tools 
techniques, methods that we are going to learn ultimately with those results we are going to improve the human performance or we are going to improve the system performance and we are going to enhance the human well being. Okay? So, that should be our uh, objective. Moving to next part of this presentation that I would like to mention here what is the current trend in this particular field. Mainly if you look at the trend and try to categorize them it is majorly divided into four major category. First two components are product ergonomics and production ergonomics and the second component is macro ergonomics and micro ergonomics. Okay? from the two perspective these broad divisions are. So, what is product ergonomics? So, we are talking about manufacturing or developing a kind of product, okay? De developing a kind of product which is user friendly following the ergonomics principle. Whereas, production ergonomics talks about human working condition during the production process. Okay. So, these two major aspect we are going to cover. Also, we understand trends talk about macro ergonomics and micro ergonomics. So, let us understand what is the definition of it. Macro ergonomics says the optimization of the relationship in the system which talks about man, technology and organization. So, how we can do the optimization. Okay. So, we cannot think that we will always talk about human being, human well-being, human benefit. No, we need to talk about optimization between the man, technology, based use of technology and the organization where it is being used. So, we have to think from all perspectives. So, 360 degree evaluation. What about micro ergonomics? It talks about the system ergonomics view focuses on the optimization of the interaction between the human body and the computer or any kind of machine that is the micro ergonomics. So, macro ergonomics talks about the whole system whereas, micro ergonomics talks about the small elements of it. Okay. So, we will be talking different tools and techniques in both perspective product ergonomics, production ergonomics, macro ergonomics and micro ergonomics. Okay? So, we will be talking different uh, varieties of tools, techniques and method from all these perspective. Now, concern is you need to identify that which is the kind of best suitable tool for you to you know introduce or evaluate or do go for the data collection. So, you need to identify what is the uh, you know trend of or what is the category of your research. Okay. Once you identify that then accordingly you can choose any one of the tool or method. So, while describing all the tools or all the methods during this particular course, what I will do? I will give the assumptions wha what is required for that specific tool. Also, I will be talking about limitations of each tool so that you, you before you use any tool, you know that particular tool is useful for your condition or not. So, that will be the flow of the course. So, when we talk about ergonomics, we are going to achieve something, right? We are going to uh, deliver something. If we take this in three direction, x, y, z direction, you can see majorly we see practical ergonomics which is applicable, then is ergonomics knowledge or database or you know some basic fundamental work and the ergonomics way of thinking and acting. So, if we are talking about practical ergonomics, it is highly applicable, applicable in the sense applied ergonomics. Okay. So, we will be talking about 
implementation of intervention directly on any kind of situation. So, that is practical. Whereas, ergonomics knowledge when we are talking about it is more of lot of research orientation that is very extensive detail. Okay? So, vertically on a particular topic you are going deep and deep and deep. Okay? So, you are trying to understand more detail about of that particular topic and which will ultimately give you some basic or fundamental results or fundamental knowledge which can be applied further in other research. Okay? So, this is second domain, third domain is ergonomics way of thinking and acting. So, training, modification, implementation and all those things will come into picture if we talk about uh, ergonomics way of thinking and acting which is highly developed. So, you need to develop products, you need to develop services, you need to develop the system and uh, so on. Okay. So, th these are the three major direction your ergonomics research can go on. Okay. So, you need to decide and it is not like that you know you, you go in only one direction. Maybe you can combine one or two direction or maybe for your research work three components are present uh, in different percentage. So, you need to have a proper understanding which varieties of tools and techniques are lying where and how do you pick them up. So, during this course you will learn that particular process or particular uh, uh, you know, choosing idea. So, you will have a basket of tools, a basket of you know, uh, methods and based on your research objective you can pick and you can set it accordingly. So, in this particular course you will be getting all varieties of methods, ergonomics method. So, I cannot promise you that I will be able to tell you everything. However, we are going to cover whatever possible maximum possible availabilities are you know uh, about the tools, techniques and methods and we are concentrating uh, in from the perspective of commonly used tools and techniques. There are many tools and techniques which are very niche. So, those may we may not discuss it because of time constraint, but we are going to discuss as much as possible. Okay? If we talk about role of ergonomics, so these are the major role of ergonomics. So, human capabilities and limitation so, we need to find out the what is human capabilities and limitation accordingly we are going to use that capability and uh, that capacity in a particular situation. So, if we can do that then only we will be uh, getting the optimum utilization of the capacity to get the maximum productivity from that particular system. Human machine interaction so, how uh, nicely or how uh, flawlessly human machine are interacting. So, if we can ensure that human machine interactions are flawless or less difficult. So, we cannot say so in ergonomic there is nothing zero. Okay. Always there is some value our objective or our uh, agenda for any research is how to minimize that risk at the maximum possible reduced level. Okay? So, that we are going to do using these tools. We will be definitely when we talk about ergonomics, we talk about teamwork. So, information processing, teamwork, so psychosocial factors, all these things are also uh, know, connected. So, ergonomics talks about teamwork. So, you know interaction between each worker, interaction between the superior and the person who is working under a leadership of a particular person. So, how the informations are happening? So, workload, work demand, um, uh, work autonomy all these things will 
come into picture. Tools, machines, material design, environmental factor. This is again very important factor because if we are talking about human capacity, human performance, it is pretty much connected with your environmental factor. So, if now I am reading some uh, slides, right. So, uh, I need to look at the slides, I need to deliver my lecture. If the illumination level is not there up to uh, where I can read the slides, definitely this is going to hamper my capacity or capability, right. So, the environmental factors, if the temperature is very high or temperature is very cold, I will feel so uncomfortable to you know deliver the lecture. So, depending on the situation, so how the environmental factors are and how it is interacting with the human performance that is also a kind of goal of uh, our any ergonomic study. Of course, last is work and work organizational design. So, how you are designing the work, how you are designing the organizational structure. So, these are all major concerns for ergonomics when we are talking about any ergonomics study. Now, I am going to tell you based on the uh, uh, no, if you are a scientist, how you are going to perform, if you are a professional, how you are going to take it ahead. So, as a scientist, the role of ergonomics will be extending the work of others. So, there is some fundamental work has been done or some application has been done, you have to take it further to the other level. Testing theories of human machine performance. So, if there are some kind of theories, suppose there are n number of theories available, you can test them, is it really applicable or not. You can develop hypothesis, you can develop various kind of models and you can question whatever earlier theories are and you can have your own agenda to prove. Okay. Using rigorous data collection and analysis uh, technique, you can have a different set of database that is also a part of work or part of job as a scientist, ergonomic scientist. Ensuring the repeatability of results. So, when you are doing a research, you should ensure you are not doing the repetitive job, okay, repetitive task. Okay. So, suppose same work is being done by somebody which is uh, no, methodically done and uh, published, proved, again you are doing the same. So, that is not a valid work. So, you have if there is some uh, challenges then definitely you can work on, but same work you should not repeat and disseminating the findings to the study. How do you do that? You can publish your uh, research of uh, results through journal publication, through conference proceedings, through patenting your study of uh, like you know if it is a product or if it is a service or if it is a process, you can patent it and publish it to the public forum. Also through seminar, conferences, you can disseminate that particular knowledge. So, these are the ways how do you uh, being a scientist use ergonomics or the role of ergonomics comes. Now, being a practitioner, what you supposed to do? You are supposed to address all real world problem. Here, all the tools and techniques that we are going to learn in this particular course is going to help you. Okay? So, you are going to address the all real world problem, whatever, sir, whatever you, are, you can see, you are addressing it. So, it is coming under application. So, it is very much related to the application of ergonomics theories and principle in, in a particular situation, in a particular real world condition. Seeking the best comprise under difficult circumstances. Okay. So, if you have a very difficult uh, circumstance where you need to compromise with one or two elements. Now, you have to judge being an ergonomist that 
which compromisation is going to give a best cost effective analysis. So, that understanding that decision making and which you are going to get or, or we will be able to make through only these use of tools and techniques. Looking to offer the most cost effective solution this is very important ok. You are going to industry, you are going to uh, give some kind of ergonomic solution. However, you need to remember any employer only will attend you if it is beneficial to the employer or beneficial to the industry. If it is not specifically when we are in India, we will not be able to implement any kind of ergonomics intervention because profit you need to maintain. If you do not have the organization or the institution or the industry, if they do not have money, then no intervention program will sustain. So, how cost effective it is? You have to develop and demonstrate and prototype the solution that is one aspect. Analyzing and evaluating the effects of changes. So, you have done the intervention, now you have to evaluate that yes, it is done. Then what, what, what is happening? I identified there is a problem and to, to give the solution of the problem, I gave this particular uh, intervention. Now, is it reduced or it is aggravated? What? So, for each and every intervention, what you need to do? We have to do the uh, comparison before and after. So, that you need to do. You have to develop the benchmark for the best practices and communicating the findings to the interested parties. So, here comes about the awareness program, you know workshops and all those things. So, being a practitioner the role of ergonomics are majorly in these areas. So, which area you are working you need to see which one you need to pick it up for your situation for your context. Basic realization this is given by uh, Stanton and Annette in their uh, one of the book which I am going to refer many times during this particular course. If we are talking about ergonomics what we should look for what we should question for ok. So, there are some basic questions that they want every ergonomics researchers or practitioners to ask ok. I will read one by one. First they ask someone that how deep should the analysis be? Why? Now, question is if I want to know just for example, I am telling ok. If I want to know that what is the kind of prevalence of musculoskeletal disorder among the bank operator, bank employees. I know ok, I am going to give some kind of questionnaire or some kind of techniques or simple focus uh, interview or maybe some kind of observation or something and then I have a kind of prevalence data. Now, do I need to understand the causal factors? Do I need to go for any kind of intervention to improve it? At what level I should give the intervention? Do I need to check after intervention it has been improved or not? So, for before we start any kind of study in the field of ergonomics, we should know how deep we want to go. If we do not have that understanding, we will not be able to choose right tool for your that particular case ok. So, that understanding at the very beginning is very important. So, we are talking about to setting the objectives of your research. Which method of data collection should be used? Of course, if we have proper understanding about our research or study objective, we will be able to set the methods correctly. If the objectives 
are not set correctly, we will be going to uh, get some, some random methods or random tool which is not really going to answer the objective that I suppose to uh, fulfill. Okay. So, each are connected with each other. So, first setting the objectives correctly and then next is your choosing a very specific method to fulfill that objective. So, if you go through this, uh, uh, this particular course, you will see so many varieties of techniques available, tools available for different situation. So, based on your situation, you are going to choose that particular tool. How should the analysis be presented? For a specific tool, it may happen that you can have varieties of analysis. Now, based on your objective, you need to decide which analysis is going to give you the best results. Okay. Where is the use of the method appropriate? How much time or effort does each method require? So, uh, I try to give the application time, learning time for each tool and technique separately during this part, uh, no, the, this particular course that for every technique you will see there will be one slide where I am talking about what is the learning time of that particular tool and what is the implementation of time of the particular tool. So, approximately you have an idea what is the total time span you have for your study and for this method how long you are going to in, you know, take for data collection or analysis. Okay. So, this is going to help you to calculate all these. How much and what type of expertise is needed to use that particular method? So, that will is you are going to so training period. Okay. What is the level of expertise is required? So, everything I try to explain for approximately every tool. Okay. Still, if you have any doubt, you can ask us. What tools are there to support the use of that particular method? So, if you need any kind of hardware or any kind of software to, uh, to uh, know, apply that, that also we are going to discuss and how reliable and valid is that particular method. Of course, reliability validity also we try to explain or explore in this particular course for each techniques and each tool. Okay. So, we try to follow this uh, set of questions uh, which we need to follow before we start any kind of study. So, uh, all these uh, tools, techniques that we are discussing or that we are going to teach you during this course will follow this similar pattern. Okay. So, you will be able to uh, get all the answer if you follow this particular course. Now, here I would like to mention something which is very important that how we distribute or how we categorize our uh, methods, tools or data collection process. So, according to uh, ANET 2022, there is two specific division. One is analytical division, no, some tools or techniques or method which is specifically analytical in nature and some are evaluative. So, the, the whatever ergonomics tools and techniques available, what we did here that we tried to distribute them into two major category that is few tools are from the analytical. So, it is going to give you lot of analytics uh, from the result and some are the evaluative in nature. So, primary purpose of analytical tools are understand a particular system. So, there will be some tool which is going to give you a basic understanding about the system. Whereas, when you are talking about evaluative tool, it is going to give some kind of measurement of the parameter which you are looking for. Example, task analysis, 
training need analysis these are all analytical tool whereas uh, workload assessment usability assessment comfort assessment these all are evaluative so you are assessing it you are evaluating it okay now we are talking about the construct validity based on an acceptable model of a system and how it performs any analytical tools constructive validity can be determined whereas evaluative tool is consistent with theory and other measure of the parameter so you have a theoretical value also you have similar variables which you can measure using some measurement instrument so both are giving similar results then only it its you know constructive validity can be determined predictive validity if we talk about for analytical tool it provides the answers to the questions for example structure of a particular task so that can be given whereas it talks evaluative tool talks about the performance prediction so if there is a particular system through evaluative tool you can predict that what could be the performance in another particular situation where you are modulating different other variables okay coming to reliability a data collection conforms to an underlying model whereas we are talking about evaluative tools techniques results from the independent sample so you can do a pilot study and from there you can confirm the reliability of that particular tool so this is the kind of dichotomy of the whatever tools available with us and we are going to follow this particular categorization or classification now if we talk about mapping of the varieties of tools because you have physical tools you have psychophysical tools behavioral tools or cognitive tools you know some kind of team handling environmental macro ergonomics varieties of you know uh, tools in different categories so how do we use or how do we choose tools when we have a situation so this is a basic mapping given by wilson here they followed five component one is data about people system development human machine performance demand and effects on people and ergonomics management program so if your study objectives are categorized in any one of these categories then how do we choose tools or techniques or method to evaluate or uh, get the results they also have categories here okay about the tools available physical psychophysiological cognitive or behavioral team environmental and macro ergonomics here you can say see that there are two major colors one is darker blue another is light blue so darker blue shading represents the primary source of design data so if you want to have some kind of design solution so from these area you should have primary data so you need to identify a method or tool to gather information or data uh, from the field study field observation okay so that is the darker shade whereas the lighter shade you can have secondary data that means from the literature okay so this is the broad classification or broad mapping i would say mapping that if you have a scenario then how do you decide which tool to be used and is it a primary data collection or i can have some kind of secondary data so this is the way how you can use this map and you can choose which tool to be used for your data collection or for your study okay so this is a broad mapping this is given by professor wilson so during this particular course we will be talking about three major domains and related tools techniques and method first is physical second is cognitive and third 
whatever methods available for the environment. Now, this environment is physical environment, okay? uh, uh, light like illumination, thermal uh, and all so, so on. Okay? So, mainly we will be talking about physical methods, cognitive methods, cognitive methods we will talk about cognitive and behavioral together and the uh, methods which is related to environment. Okay? So, these are the three major domains that we are going to cover during this particular course. Now, I would like to introduce you to with the books that you are going to follow. Uh, these books are kind of available online or you can purchase them you know as a hard copy. So, you can follow these books during this particular course or some other research material like published paper or you know some kind of research document which is available you know different internet sources. Okay. So, that also you can follow. So, this I suggest before we go ahead further in our actual study or you know course discussion method discussion you should follow this book and if you uh, want to know more about this book you can come back to the discussion forum you can ask us we will be able to guide you. So, let us begin our course that is the ergonomics research technique. Thank you.